I mentioned this textbook a few weeks ago. Did anybody take the effort to look at the online version that's freely available? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Checking. The goal for the next 10 minutes is that you'll be able, afterwards, you'll be able to explain what photonic crystals are. Did anybody already tell me what they are? No. Okay. So this is the outline of how we work towards that goal. Um, we start with what the words mean, photonics, crystals, and then we build up what photonic crystals are, and then their applications. The first word is photonics, and that has to do with light and the study of thereof. Um, does anybody know why uh, butterfly wing is so brightly colored, or how that works? How it's blue? Yes? To attract light. To attract light. Or to absorb light. Or to absorb. It yes. absorbs certain wavelengths of light, and uh, it reflects uh, So that's how we see it. Okay. That's how we see the color. Now, pigment is is that thing that we're used to. We we have white light, which is composed of different frequencies of light. They hit a surface of some sort of material, and we have blue light gets reflected, and the other lights get absorbed, and then we see that it looks blue. Now that is not how a butterfly works. It's a photonic crystal and not a pigment. Um, so this is more about the goals of what we're looking at and what we're going to do here today. So the next word is crystals. Now what are crystals? They're periodic structures. This, for instance, is a zinc blend structure. Ignore, if you ignore the different colors, which they're not accurate, um, if you ignore the different colors, it's also what a diamond structure is, silicon, germanium, these are all structures used in your computers. They look something, this is a silicon wafer, it's what your chips and your computers are made out of. This is what the molecular structure looks like, and we fabricate this chip using VLSI on this, which some people in this room are familiar with, how that goes like. We have different types of structures. Um, a simple cubic without the center or the sides is what salt is. It's also a crystal, right? So when we look at a glass, such as the, the window is out to, towards a brick wall behind us here, um, we see a reflection. It's a partial reflection. We see the brick wall, but we also see ourselves. We can calculate how much light goes through using these equations. Now, if there was going to be an in-class test after this, these would be the equations that you could use to calculate how much of ourselves do we see in that and how much of the brick wall do we see in that, depending on where the light is coming from. So, if we make that into a periodic structure, we take air, and then a glass pane, and then air, and then a glass pane, and we space them a quarter wavelength apart. Now, we decide what the wavelength is by calculating uh, for certain thickness, a certain wavelength. So we have to decide, what, what is it the laser that I'm using? Laser is primarily one color, one wavelength. So we could calculate everything for a laser, and it would reflect the laser, laser back off the windows and the stack of windows. And it would look like a mirror to that one frequency of light. Now, if we shine white light at it, the reflection that we get back might only be red, and everything else goes through. So this can be extended into multiple dimensions. We have the one-dimensional arrangement that we were talking about. We can make it into a two-dimensional arrangement, which is primarily what we work with. And we can extend it into three dimensions. So now we have a material, and you might have heard the word metamaterials. These are structured materials. The butterfly wing is in some parts 2D, but it is, for the most part, 3D. What we can do with this sort of structure in the engineering world is not the butterfly wing, but we can use it to build computers. And in this concept, there's what's called a micropolis. And we can build this all on one substrate. This is called a substrate, if we built this all on a material. Now, there's other concepts, and how we do this right now is we take the independent devices, such as the laser that's been built in here. It was probably built on gallium arsenide or indium 
phosphide, uh, probably gallium arsenide, similar to this, and then it was glued onto something, a chip, an electronic chip. And right now we build these devices by taking each block and building it separately and gluing them all onto something. The hope is, is that we can do it the same way that we do integrated circuits, is that we can build them all on one substrate without any glue, without any discrete components as they're called. We used to take transistors and resistors and capacitors and solder them into a circuit board. Well, that's what we're doing with epoxy right now uh, with optical devices. We're gluing them onto a substrate. Some devices have integrated certain aspects, but we do not have full integration quite yet. Now that we're talking about crystals, there's this spacing. I was saying a quarter wavelength and so on. Well, if we've got a material like this and we want to work at a different frequency of light, let's say that this works well, you can shine infrared light right through this and you can see right through it. If I was holding a glass slide, or depending on the type of glass, you'd be able to see right through it. But if I took an infrared laser, it wouldn't go through it necessarily, depending on the material. So, the problem with this is, is if we want to change the lattice constant of a material, other properties change, freezing points. If we want to use this material um, at a different wavelength, then we start, well, what, what happens when we stretch the bonds? Well, we have to use different atoms. All sorts of different properties change. The convenient thing about these structured materials, such as the panes of glass, is that we can scale them. We can make each layer thicker, and it's still glass. It's still air. And in that system, we can actually scale different types of waves. We can scale um, from x-rays to, uh, to ultraviolet to visible light to infrared to microwaves and sound waves and radio waves. Sound waves aren't in here, but they are about this uh, length. The difference between different types of waves, such as the sound waves that I just mentioned, are that sound waves only have amplitude. Electromagnetic waves, which are scaling, they also have this thing called a vector nature. And this vector nature, we can polarize. So that's not what this lecture is about. There are differences between the two, but we can demonstrate different phenomena interchangeably between the two, as long as we realize that there are a couple of differences. One of the things that we can demonstrate is there's this scaling property, right? If we, for those who have taken physics, there's something called an electron probability distribution function. There's, you can show the, the way the, the electron clouds travel through a crystal or where they exist. Now that's a magnitude type wave function. It doesn't have that polarized direction. The thing is, is like I said, we can't scale it and we can't build things in order to demonstrate that principle. But what we can do is we can scale the whole thing into a larger domain and use electromagnetic waves and demonstrate something very similar. Now, there's a Nobel Prize to be had if someone can demonstrate Anderson localization. There's a guy in Israel that's really after that. There's a guy in my lab that, as a part of his uh, PhD thesis that he defended last year, he demonstrated that he could show the theoretical hydrogen wave function in a photonic crystal. So what are other applications of photonic crystals? You have an opal, you have in nature a sea mouse. Each one of those spines is a perfect, it looks something very similar to this. Now what is this? This is the cross section to a photonic crystal fiber. It's very similar to an optical fiber. It contains, we structure this material here periodically such that the light at the frequency that we were talking about doesn't escape, and then it's contained there. And then we make this into a long structure, and the light gets guided down. We can take a structure, this is off my professor's website, we can shine white light down a guide here, and depending on which modes are allowed through this particular structure, we can cause the localization that I was talking about before, and it couples out of plane for different frequencies depending on the structure.